We are live. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right. We are going to get started in just a moment. All right, everyone. Uh, this is our March Town Hall meeting, and we have some very special guests uh, with us tonight. Uh, the topic for this month is taking agency over healthy living. And that might sound a little bit confusing, so that's why we have some experts on the call to lead us through uh, more about what that means. Really, what we're going to be talking about is leadership um, and athletes in Special Olympics, uh, advocating for themselves, and then especially advocating for themselves within health and physical activity. And so the special guests that we have tonight uh, include Special Olympics legend, Annette Lynch, and she's going to be guiding our conversation with two Special Olympics athlete leaders. We have Karen Steele and Martin Moran from New Hampshire joining us for the evening. And uh, just would love to give a, a quick introduction of Annette before I kick it over to them for their intros and our town hall. So uh, I actually had the pleasure of meeting Annette Lynch, gosh, maybe about uh, 10 years ago at this point when I was very new in Special Olympics and Annette was doing a lot within coaching excellence and coach education, training volunteers in the Special Olympics movement. And she was definitely a huge mentor for me and I learned a lot from her. Um, but Annette got her start with Special Olympics in 1986 and she is still with the movement, sharing all of her expertise and experiences um, and her connections. And I think one of my favorite things about Annette is that she uh, played a Division One collegiate basketball at Illinois, uh, Illinois State, Illinois State University, right. and which I get wrong sometimes. But um, I have a shared love with Annette in basketball, and so um, that is something that I really treasure about her and uh, and her passion. And so. Uh, it is definitely a huge privilege to have Annette Lynch on the call uh, and definitely an, an amazing uh, opportunity to get to know Martin and Karen as well and hear from them. These guys know what they're talking about within advocating for themselves in health and in fitness. And so you all are in for a treat. Uh, and I have one housekeeping item before I turn it over to everyone so we have a live chat going on right now in um, on Facebook. So if you have a Facebook account, uh, you can view this video if you whether you have a Facebook account or not. But especially if you have an account, um, please type in the chat, say hello. Annette, Martin, and, and Karen are going to be asking questions and talking through some really interesting things. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear from Special Olympics athletes and families and coaches, your experiences, your thoughts, your questions, your answers. So please don't be shy. Say hi. I will be responding in the chat as these guys uh, share what they know. So without further ado, for that long introduction, I'm going to kick it over to Annette and Karen and Martin to talk uh, athletes taking agency over healthy living. We're going to first start with uh, some brief introductions so that Karen and Martin, they know a little bit more about you. And Karen, let's start with you and then we'll turn it over to Martin. What would you like others to know about you? Um. Well, before uh, I was in Special Olympics, I loved to write, so I published a book. <laughs> that is huge. Th there and, and there it is. Up, all right. This is the book that Karen wrote um, called The Christmas Jacket. Karen, where is your book available? Um, it's on uh, Kindle. I think the Apple Bookstore, um, Barnes and Nooks, the Nook Place. Oh man! <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> you published it through Amazon, correct? Yes, Amazon. It's on Amazon uh, Kindle, I believe. Fantastic. And Martin, what about you? What would you like them to know about you? I would like you to know that I'm in high school. I'm, I'm writing this uh, a big dissertation about being healthy. But being healthy is just not just 
eating right. It involves going to the gym. I usually spend most of my week in the gym. And you'll share a little bit more about uh, uh, some of the fitness challenges that you were a part of, especially in preparation for the USA Games. Um, but I had the opportunity to work with both Karen and Martin at um, the Leadership Week with Special Olympics New Hampshire. And that was the very last week of November into the first week of December, where we had a chance to um, actually train in the introduction to athlete leadership and then understanding athlete leadership. And, and Martin especially has taken that to the next level and he's written his senior paper on athlete leadership and connecting that with fitness. Um, with both Martin and Karen, um, they're coming from different places, but both of them have achieved tremendously. And that's what um, I noticed about both of them. They have been able to find their strengths, and we'll talk a little bit about that, um, and then be able to utilize those strengths and, and begin to help other people. Now, Karen and Martin, first question, and we're treating this like a conversation. What, what was your life like before athlete leadership? What, what can you zero in on and share with people who are listening to us today? Karen? Um, before I was um, offered to be in the athlete leadership, I was an athlete um, for a long time. Some health conditions happen, so now I'm a coach. Mm -hmm. What and was it like in school for you? It was hard trying to fit in, and I was bullied a lot. Um, but um, when I was in seventh grade on how to get here, a teacher wouldn't let me be in the, the softball class. So my brother was in high school, and my mom loves to talk about me. So mm -hmm. she... Um, she got a high school teacher and they're like, yeah, you should join. You know, I was in seventh grade. So I was really like nervous with high school kids because mm -hmm. I've seen the movie Mean Girls and I really thought high school <laughs> would really like make my life worse, but it ended up changing my life and my best friend. I have a bunch of best friends and I made friends. I felt welcomed and mm -hmm. The bullying never stopped, but I mean, I, I'm trying to do, find a way to do better, to help people mm -hmm. because I didn't want anyone else to be in that position where I was. Mm -hmm. So and I thank my mom for doing that because sure. it got me here today. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Martin, what about you? What was, uh, what was it like for you um, in school before you really got into athlete leadership? Before I got really into athlete leadership, it was more focused on studies, more, more focused on my educational process. Besides the educational process, before it also kind of showed, kind of I understood what it meant, what, what being a leader is. Mm -hmm. Be, before, it just, I just felt like I was just missing a part. I was a missing part of myself that I really never realized because when I, before it kind of being a captain on a team is a big leadership role. But when you take that role, you kind of get to the next step. And then after, and then which led into athlete leadership, mm -hmm. which also led for me to be a health messenger. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a process that you went through Karen, you went through a process, too. Um, I know that when I first had an opportunity to meet you, you were very quiet. Not that um, that's all of who you are, <laughs> but uh, being able to come out of yourself and begin to advocate. And, it, and I think for both of you, it came through athlete leadership, the training that you had an opportunity to get, and uh, there was no place to hide in athlete leadership because each of you had to make a speech and so <laughs> on. So, Karen, what was what's athlete leadership then meant to you? 
Um, it means trying to be a leader for athletes that, that can't, that can't do that. And, um, self advocating and, um, building relationships. Mm -hmm. And I know that when you first started, when, when you made the jump to just being in the class, to being part of the class, you began to share things. I and did. What the response of your, your classmates in athlete leadership? How did um, they respond? They understood. Yeah. I shared my story of, of being bullied and, and they understood because I didn't feel like I fit in. Um, none of the teams I knew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, it was a really process to go from being shy and, and not sure what to do to sharing my story and others going, I feel you, that stinks, you know, I'm here. And they and I, I felt like from being a little person to I had friends. <laughs> And yeah. Martin, what has athlete leadership meant to you? It has meant being, understanding the definition of leadership. Besides taking the leadership away, I also learned how to, what healthy habits can mean, can implement. Like you could, like before I was drinking all these unhealthy beverages and candies, mm -hmm. along with eating junk food and fast food. But now I'm kind of taking it and say, I want to get to, into the gym so I don't have to have an increased risk of an underlying health condition. But mm -hmm. it also is proved to me that exercise is my life. Like, mm -hmm. and it also helps me lose like weight, which in building muscle to be prepared for sports. Mm -hmm. like, like being a tall guy, you can't just be like very overweight, obese. You kind mm -hmm. of have to build strength. Yeah. And you started out by doing those kinds of things in the, the first fitness challenges. Um, what about um, your preparation for the USA Games? What, what sport did you play? And how did you make the, the, the shift between, you know, talking about fitness and actually doing fitness it, like it, it comes it came before tryouts I realized that I wanted to be a, a, with the USA team for 5v5 basketball but mm -hmm. I was before I was really out of shape but after tryouts I realized that I really out of shape and I really got to get myself into the gym to make to show people people teammates that be having being the youngest person on the team doesn't mean that I don't have the skills so each sure. time I went into the gym I focused on the specific skill sometimes I focused on running sometimes mm -hmm. I focused on dribbling and passing and rebounds or sometimes I also focused on my game my strategy do i kind of take do i want to defer the the um tip to the second half or the second quarter like you gotta be it can't comes mentally and along emotion like mentally it kind of makes you think of every move that you have to make to get the to get what you want like which is basically being a bronze medalist what each of you learned when we got through and um, addressed the basic leadership skills, you know, there's six of them, and each one of them meant a little different, but each one of them needs to be mastered in order to be an athlete leader. Now, it doesn't mean we have all of them right off the bat. It means we have some of the things in each one and we look to build upon those strengths but one um can you give me one of them and then we'll we'll actually share what those six leadership skills are 
Karen, can you give me one of those six? Um, Goal-oriented. Goal-oriented. What has that meant to you? Um, staying focused and uh, making a goal, achieving the goal, and just keep keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's helped to carry you forward, like your book, what you've done on the book, and, and that you just haven't ended in one book. How many <laughs> books have you written now? Um, I think I'm down to four or five, but they haven't been published yet. Okay. No, but the, the fact that you put those ideas to pen is, is important. So goal oriented is one. What about you, <clears throat> Martin? What's another one? Another leadership skill. A relationship building. Relationship yeah. building. Relationship mm -hmm. building. And what needs to be developed before you really have a really good, solid relationship? What's a biggie? You actually brought it out. It starts with you a T. To, you have to build trust. Build yes. trust. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what does that do when you build trust? It make, makes friendships. Makes mm -hmm. teams bond together. Mm -hmm. Because you know somebody has your back. You know that um, trust you're willing to be vulnerable. You want to be a good friend and you want them to be a good friend. And for you, Karen, one of your friends did what for your book? Uh, she illustrated it. Yeah. I met her through Special mm -hmm. Olympics and mm -hmm. illustrated my book. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> so you got two former athletes. So that's right. For sure. <laughs> So we've that's got. A, I love that that's a mark of leadership that you are making connections and building confidence coming out of bullying to to be maybe more bold and make relationships and um, you know it not that you're making relationships to get something out of it but it came out really great where you have a friend that is awesome at illustrations and could do that illustration. Yeah. Um, I think that's really cool. Thank and if I, I might interject that we have a comment. Um, that I just wanted to share from a fellow athlete here and staff member at Special Mix Virginia. So Emily also shared she did Global Messengers and is also a leader like you all. And I think uh, this relationship building skill is a cool one. And uh, she shared also being able to be more outspoken and make more friends um, because of being a global messenger in the, the leadership program here in Virginia. So uh, I think that's a really cool testament to these some of these shared skills and wanted to share that. That's really awesome, Emily. And we're, we're grateful that you shared. For sure. Thank you, Emily. What's another leadership skill? Uh, one of the basic leadership skills. Um, Karen, is it your turn or Martin, is it yours? I think it's mine. Okay. I think which one? What would uh, another one? Yeah, yes, it's a big one. It is a big one. What has that meant to you? Um, well, communicating through my athletes um, has helped me a lot because I can understand their strengths and the weaknesses and try to work on it. Mm -hmm. You've also communicated through your what? My book. Yes. Told yeah. a story. Mm -hmm. That people... Um, many of them have identified with, and that's another form of communication. What's another one, Martin? Decision-making. So Decision-making, yes. And what has that meant to you? Decision-making, it comes down to whether I play a sport or whether I try to do my homework. Like, okay. because, like it kind of goes back to the study sport like do i go out it meant, meant to me by kind of deciding it's kind of like cause and effect do i want to do this for a party or do i just want to it's like you have to make on small details you have to make like mm -hmm. whether i have a scoreboard or i don't have a scoreboard at a basketball game or mm -hmm. do we have pizza or do we have um me at me and potatoes at at a like, like a special lump yeah what's the nutritionist 
the a nutritious meal that we can have at Special Olympics and not just pizza. Hmm. What's what's another one, Karen? I think um, we're getting close to this would be five, right? Yeah. Keeping count. Um adaptability. Yes, that's an excellent one. <laughs> And certainly in Special Olympics, we need to be flexible. But what does adaptability do for you, knowing that that's a basic leadership skill? I'm going to ask you the same thing, Martin. So think about what adaptability has done. Karen, so, what has it done? Things don't go, always go as planned. So you got, you got to uh, adjust mm -hmm. to what you have and quick thinking. Mm -hmm. And focus back on your goal. A lot of times people try to take you out of your goal to yeah. try to distract you from your focus, either because they're envious of what you can do or they want to be the, the person in charge. But that's exactly, I think, has helped you with your books because you didn't stop with just one. So the books was one area and the other area was helping to advocate not only for yourself, but others. So what did yeah. that look like? On advocating for others. Mm -hmm. I joined clubs. I became a leader. I became a coach try, trying to find ways to use my voice and to help athletes, um, you know, be successful, but not like successful, but be, um, where they want to be, be comfortable and happy. And mm -hmm. and that's huge, Karen, because what that does is you've, you've helped people help themselves because that's where the biggest change is going to occur as you found out even yourself that that weekend of what <laughs> you were able to achieve. Martin, what about you? What does that look like for you? Adaptability is basically being flexible, which is another synonym that I ha that I know from writing my paper. That's but right. ad adaptability in my life is when you have something that is planned and it doesn't happen. So, say if I were going to need to go take a take a test or something, in my and it suddenly just gets canceled or changed, you have to think. You have to say, okay, it's good, but you have more time to reach a goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can get you back on. So that's taking... If I may, I just posted in the chat for athletes yeah. to give an example of them being adaptive. So if we get any good ones, I oh, might, good. might wait. But we'll let you guys keep going. But we have, mm -hmm. we have that question. So athletes, if you have an example of being adaptive, um, changing your course, but staying in, in your goal... Or as Martin put it, uh, being flexible with a change in your schedule or, or a circumstance, then um, please share and we will shout it out while they continue. What each of them have done with adaptability is been able to kind of reconnect with what they wanted to be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it hasn't stopped you. Uh, maybe sometimes before it stopped you, because sometimes those situations were extremely painful. But being able to kind of get back to your core, what's the most important thing to you? If we were to ask you, what's the one most important thing to you, Martin, what would it be? And then Karen, what would it be for you? Like one most important thing for me is being physically fit and healthy. Okay, Karen, what about you? Um, <laughs> it can be something entirely different. This is okay. just different. I would say making sure my athletes are happy and having fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having fun. You know, when you have fun, you enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the moment actually has, is, has challenges with it. Every moment is not really easy, but what you do with what you have, you know, really brings out the best in each one of you. Okay, we've got another basic skill. 
basic leadership skill. It's just not enough to do. How can we do something to, to do better? What's the focus there? What's the basic leadership there in doing better? Something about continuously. Whose turn what is, is it? <laughs> what is it? Continuously. Continuously improving. Yes. That's exactly right. So it doesn't limit you. What does it meant to you, Martin? Continuously improving. It meant like keep working on a specific skill. Like say like till I master the six leadership skills, you have to continuously work. An example of it is you have to continu continuously work through a presentation. It might mm -hmm. be you might have to adjust. You might have to adjust it to a group of people. Mm -hmm. What about you, Karen? Um, well, what I do for my athletes for bowling is I keep a score sheet and I. Mm -hmm. Give it, and I tell them the score of last week's compared to next week, this week's, and if it's good, they'll, they're proud of it, and they're continuing to improve. Mm -hmm. it, you know, record keeping is important because record keeping acknowledges what you're doing well or improving upon, but it also acknowledges what you may need to continue to work on because you're not quite there yet. So all information is good information because it helps you hone your skills. That's why there's six core leadership skills. There's not just one. And you can take a look at it. Maybe it's, it's like a diamond. A facet is one side of a diamond. And we're looking at here six different sides. So in order for that diamond to really be able to show its lux um, luster and brilliance, you need each of them. And as you continue working on them, you know, that, that, that sparkle gets even more. Now, in terms of, of advocating and going the next step, as being a health messenger and looking at fitness, how have you connected, Martin? How have you connected athlete leadership and fitness? I have c connected it between my personal fitness along with helping fitness with others. Like my practicum is leading a fitness challenge, but leadership connects to fitness by trying to relate your fitness goals along fitness goals mm -hmm. with being physically fit. Mm -hmm. And so leading this fitness challenge, you've, you've led your team. You said earlier that you were a team captain. And so how did you lead your team? Um, what did you do with your team to begin with? First, I developed a relationship. Okay. Second, I kind of under thought about how I should lead them. So for the first part of this, we went mm -hmm. for my low program, we were just going in the stretches, which mm -hmm. was not really a proper warm up. True. So then I kind of told my coach, I want to do two laps. Then I want to a light warm up along with a little bit of strength exercises, mm -hmm. such as sit ups or push ups. But what I realized is that they're not really, they don't really have, they don't really have that skill of being a leader. So you have to lead them, you have to give them what they want attention, I give them help to assist them to get the common goal. What about you, Karen? How do we how did have you connected athlete leadership and fitness? Um making sure they're they're mentally uh, ready and mm -hmm. 
Uh, That's a really good point because a lot of people don't see kind of the mental, the importance of the mental readiness part. They just consider physically I need to be ready. But what does that mental readiness look like? Well, I use my past experiences to uh, give them my advice and they can either take it or not take it. And get them. But you offer it. And you offer it yeah. freely. Um, with regard to now fitness and a healthy lifestyle, you found out that you just can't do one without the other. Or if you do one, it doesn't lead you to maybe the best place that you can be. So with what you have done, Martin, you are using fitness Tell, tell about your your steps. Remember one of the fitness challenges? You had to record the number of steps you did. What did that look like? That like record first step number one is you gotta have a like an Apple Watch or a tracking device. Okay. But then number two, you have to fill out a survey, which is very tedious. With a number of steps kind of like kind of focused number of steps the goal was to get a million six months but I realized that some of the people were taking it seriously and some of it not so I built relationship with the people who were taking sleep because I felt like they could benefit from motivation but what I realized is that, that you have to by example. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I popped a chat uh, question in here because, as, and I love that you were talking about motivation, Martin. I think this is such an interesting conversation when we are thinking about athletes being leaders and fitness. And I think it makes me think, you know, what, well, well, why? Why is it so valuable that, that you guys are leaders to other athletes or, or leading yourself and your own fitness goals um, and health goals? And so that made me think of motivation. So I wonder if anyone in the chat would like to share um, or Martin or uh, Karen or even Annette, you know, who motivates you to be fit and healthy? I think we 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 know our parents can be motivating. We know our coaches uh, can be motivating, and our friends. Um, we know we can motivate ourselves, and and so I, a part of me wonders if some of this conversation is um, is a value because we're talking about kind of self motivations. If we are our own leaders, then we're leading ourselves towards making healthy choices. But um, mm -hmm. is that something that do you feel like you guys are leaders for yourselves just as much as you are leaders for others? Yeah, I would say it's my health. You know, my health isn't doing well, so I'm trying to change the way I eat to be better. And I guess I'm my own leader trying to lead to more good habits than bad habits. <laughs> and it's it's a daily commitment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You have to make a daily commitment to, to be your best. And sometimes mm -hmm. you fall a little short, but... What occurs is, you know, at 11.59 and 59 seconds p.m. with one more tick of the clock, what do you have? You have a brand new day. And you can make that next day mean more than the previous day. You don't have to accept less. Um, one of my former players played for her mother at the high school level. And one of, I'll never forget this phrase. If better is possible, good is not enough. If better is possible, good is not enough. And that's when you take a look at continuous improvement how can you better yourself? And it doesn't mean you fall short. It mm -hmm. means that you take and you build upon strengths. And that's what I learned from Special Olympics athletes. Mm -hmm. Because in sports, people 
tend to focus on the negative. Hey, you can dribble well with your right hand. We want you to do double time with your left hand. Mm. Well, one of my athletes had cerebral palsy and I could have worked with his left hand and not change it because uh, it was so restricted. But we taught him how to trap the ball. We taught him how to be able to move, get the ball with his good hand and take the other hand to put it next to it. And you know what happened? The mistakes went away because he was building on what he could do, not what he couldn't do. And each one of you have found those strengths. Karen, for you, it's been writing and then being able to switch that over to helping others as a coach, as a confidant, as a motivator, that you've been able to continue forward. And Martin, you've started out and your strength has been communication. You are never one to have few words. You are not afraid to say what you think, but you're also using your leadership and the fitness challenge now of being able to be a, a role model toward that end. Mm -hmm. So with that said, what's your next goal? What are you thinking that you would like to achieve next? Because I know you all are thinking about something. Karen, mm -hmm. what does it look like for you? And Martin, what does it look like for you? What's your next goal? Or would you like to extend the goal that you're working on right now? Y'all can answer this in the chat too. I just posted it. What is your all's next goal? Uh, my next goal? Um, what is your next goal? Uh, my next goal is uh, I'm being a bot. You're being what? I've never bought you, but Oh, bocce? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Being a good bocce <laughs> player and a good bocce coach. What about you, Martin? What's your next goal? My next goal it, it, but... for me is to like kind of be a role model, be valid Victorian in my studies, trying to be the highest person in my class graduate, but on a special Olympic size, double me in our athlete leadership by one part being a health messenger and one part being a spokesperson. Good. But also advocating for change, which I, in New Hampshire, I see a lot of improvement that, that could, we could do a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Emily said, um, that it was helpful in the pandemic to hear other athletes staying fit. Um, mm -hmm. Stephanie Mutter's goal is to make new friends um, in Special Olympics. We have a few other folks who said some cool things about who motivates them. Stephanie also said that her parents and her motivate mm -hmm. themselves. And then um, we have a shout out, Jerry Holy's here. And uh, he also says that he, uh, you know, is mostly motivated by himself, but, and then also like you guys has turned that into mm -hmm. um, motivating others. So I just wanted to give a few shout outs. There's a lot of great comments and I'm keeping up as best I can as y'all chat, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, these goals are, are really great. Um, so thanks all for, for sharing those. And I wanted to, and for the folks in the chat also sharing. With fitness and a healthy lifestyle, how do you daily make a commitment to that? What are the struggles that go along with that? Martin, what about you? This For me, commitment. It's the, commit, the struggles is trying to adjust to where I'm at from being a national per, player for basketball to in my local program. Mm -hmm. But another struggle for me is trying to be not a gym rat, but trying to boost my endurance. Like not focusing on basketball every time I go to the gym. 
try to variety and re- balancing my schedule with school along with uh, with physical exercise. Now, is this going to be just a temporary thing? What's going to happen next year? Maybe one. Next year, I have my plan is to finish my one class at my local high school along with taking another uh, college class. Oh, cool. Very cool. And your commitment, you know, health is just not a one time thing. What is health? Hmm. What is but, health? Yeah. Health is like your body. Like yeah. your your whole your whole body from up to down. Yeah, and it and it doesn't stop. <laughs> if you stop, it stops. And now we, we have a problem. Karen, what about for you? What's the, the commitment you know that that you make to yourself with regard to healthy living? Uh, healthy living. <laughs> I think just waking up every day and trying to do some exercises mm-hmm. and keeping my cholesterol low in check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and it's not easy. Um, I mean, I, I know I've been on a weight control program myself. Um, the athletes have helped me stay committed. Um, because if, if I let it go, it not only affects me, but it affects other people that I work with. I end up being less than who I am and what I can contribute. And my goal has always been helping others help themselves because I believe everybody has that capability. It's, it's unlocking the potential. And I think that um, with that, other people, it's like each of you have established a legacy. The legacy has to do with what you've been able to improve. And as you work with other people, that legacy is extended. So you start off one and you help one other. That person helps one other or two others. And it can go on so that you have no idea you could be helping hundreds of people because of how you are and and what you end up doing Mm -hmm. in advocating for yourself Mm -hmm. and for others. We have some we have some uh I see the great wisdom in the in the chat here. So Pam had admitted her struggle. Uh, not drinking enough water. And so one thing I wanted to show right next to me here, Pam, I have my trusty light green water bottle that I have successfully kept and not lost for over a year, which feels like a big success. <laughs> oh, yes, good, has good water. Yeah. Uh, and I love it. It's super durable. I can go upside down. It doesn't spill. Um, so I love this water and I can keep refilling it and it helps um, me remember to take sips. Um other people shared really great things. And I, I think this also reminds me of the relationship building component of leadership that you guys were talking about. You mentioned building trust and part of that is willing to be vulnerable. So this isn't always a fun conversation because we're admitting things that are hard for us, but it's a good thing to do that. And so <laughs> love that Jerry shared eating sweets and we had some other people sure. uh, reflecting that that was also a challenge for them. Um and, uh, you know, some, some, ch- some challenge with, you know, managing weight. Yeah. Um, I, I really love it. Emily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Emily even said, I thought some, this was really great guys. She said, you got to keep trying to be healthy over and over again. It's a never ending journey full of different challenges. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really honest look at a life of, uh, being leaders of our own bodies and our own decisions mm-hmm. um, and being healthy. It's not a decision we make one time to make one good decision. <laughs> like I ate one salad this week. Great. And that's my healthy choice. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a daily practice. So thank you for sharing that, Emily. And um, um, I just think these are really, really great. And, uh, and even, yeah, Izzy reflected and with her listening skills of something you said, and that, you know, try again the next day and the na- day after that. 
11 59 and 59 seconds you've one second left and it's a new day and we can make it whatever we want it want it to be uh, with new goals and new energy to to try and make healthy choices so um thanks for reiterating that in, in before the we have kind of a wrap up with and i'll ask both Martin and Karen, if there's one thing that you'd like to share, what would that be? And mm -hmm. for those of you who are listening and being a part of what we've done, if you have any questions or would like to make a comment yourself, you know, please go ahead and put it in, in the chat. Um, as you're putting it in the chat, Martin and Karen, if you have one parting thought that you would like to share with others regarding whether it's athlete leadership, whether it's the connection between that and, and fitness and a healthy lifestyle, what would be that one parting thought that you would have? Who'd like to go first, Karen or Martin? I'll do it. <laughs> go ahead, Karen. Uh, don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up Mm -hmm. Persevere. Did you hear me? Don't give up. <laughs> yes. yes, that's an excellent one. Martin, what's your parting thought? My parting thought is fitness is not just your health. It's about understanding what your body is. Going into the athlete leadership section, that being a leader doesn't just come from one masteratorial skill. It comes from building trust, building those six skills along with working at them, working with mm -hmm. others that you have a hard time with, making the next step every time with every person. Very good. Mm -hmm. Both you. of you had excellent parting thoughts. If more of us would listen, <laughs> we would be in better shape as well. What about the, the chat? Do we have... There weren't any questions. We, we have uh, a one. Jerry uh, piped in and shared a um, a comment. Um, changing your workout routine to work on different elements, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how much you will improve. Which sounds a little bit of what uh, Martin was just saying. Mm -hmm. um, not just focus on one thing, but to focus on multiple things. Oh, and then I do think there is one question that's popped up here. Um, Oh, yes. Karen, with your coaching experience with Special Olympics, what of the leadership traits <laughs> do you think are the most important uh, specifically within coaching Special Olympics? What's the most important um, you would say? I would say the communication and relationship building. The communication, communication and Communication and relationship building. Uh, mm -hmm. Relationship yeah. building. You guys yes. hate and build coach experiences and other people and six where they need to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That, that was great. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a, a comment. And we'll, we'll end it here with this positive comment from Anna, who's been also pretty active in the chat, just saying and that this has been really fun to listen and to participate. And so, um, I just, uh, yeah, thank you, Anna, for your for your kind of final comment and the the rah rah for talking about this conversation in in, uh, in um, or talking about this topic of leadership and fitness. Sure. Casey, and thank chat. you so very much for inviting us. Karen, Martin, and I have thoroughly enjoyed being able to share what we think and feel, and mm -hmm. um, are so appreciative of this opportunity. Well, thank you all so much. You are definitely leading the way. Um, this was, I, I would say, probably one of our, our favorite town halls that we've had. So I hope, um, would love to have you guys back every month to lead our town halls because you just lead such great discussion and are so motivating. So um, thank you. We're just so grateful for you. Thank you guys so much uh, for taking the time and, and sharing all you know and teaching us. Have a wonderful night, guys. Okay. Thank Bye you. now. Okay. Bye-bye.